Looks like, uh, Noelle, we have some new students here today. Yeah. And so while we sit and wait for everyone to settle in, I invite you all to just check in with the present moment experience. How does it feel like to be here, to be in your body, to arrive into Sangha? Anxiousness, excitement, curious, not sure, whatever that might be there. I think, yeah, we're good. The volume's good, yeah. And welcome to everyone on Zoom. I'm glad you're able to join from afar. Good morning, dear friends. I'm so happy to see you all here, um, gathering in community. And as what the Buddha calls the Sangha, the community that practice mindfulness and coming together with like-minded friends is one of the aspects, the important aspects about being on this spiritual path. It's not the last of the three, but it's equally as important to remember to take refuge in the Sangha. And I want to ask all the kids, if you can come and join me up here. Can you come for a moment? Can you sit with me? I have some things I want to ask you. Oh, hi, Addy. Hi. Oh, my God, it's been such a long time, Tara. And some new friends. Hi. Sina. Hi, Sina. And what's your name? Celia. Celia, nice to meet you. Hi. How are you? And we have, hi, what's your name? Remy. Remy, nice to meet you. And then we have, who's that over there? What's your name? Edith. Edith, nice to meet you. So I want to ask you a question here. Is there a recipe that your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa make, like of some favorite cookie or dessert that you know of? Can you think of a certain dish that they make that is like a recipe that's like passed on from one generation to the next? Trifle. What is it called? Co trifle. Trifle? What, what is that? It's a like only oh. make it for special. Sorry, let me. Here, you can speak into the mic. We make it. It's called trifle. We make it for special vacations. Oh, what's, what's, what's in it? Like pudding and jello, whipped yeah. cream and sprinkles. Mm. It's really good. Yum. And fruit. And who? Oh, this one probably needs the volume to, to be. <laughs> and let me ask you something, Addy. So, um, where did that recipe come from? Who was it passed down from? Um, my great great grandma. Wow. Your great, great grandma. Wow. That's amazing. And does anyone else has a, have a recipe here that someone raised their hand earlier? Was, did you raise your hand? What was the recipe that you had from home? Uh, my mom makes bread. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. And did she, where did she get that recipe from? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a certain way that she makes it that it comes out perfect every time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want to share with you a recipe that's been around for like, I, I had to do the math. It was like over 120 something thousand generations. 
So that will be your great, 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 great. Well, we could be here all night if I keep going, but you're but the great, 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 great ancestors. Okay. So over a hundred thousand ancestors or generations way, 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 way back. And this is the recipe for happiness. A recipe for happiness. So like there's a recipe for bread, there's a recipe for that dessert, that trifle, yeah. So there's a recipe for happiness that's been passed down to us for over a hundred thousand generations, which is uh, equal to, it's down, it's from the, my mic, there we go. So that's from 2,600 years ago. Wow. Yeah, wow, right? Did you have something you want to say? No? Bread. Bread. <laughs> yeah, bread is pretty, makes you happy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so this recipe that the Buddha passed down to us is this, the recipe to, ha to being happy. And... So we're going to start by just giving thanks this morning to the Buddha, giving gratitude to the Buddha for this recipe he's passed down to us, and then giving thanks to the teachings, which is basically like the recipe, right? So you can also, while we're going through this, this, this uh, chant of gratitude, you can also give thanks to your great-great-grandmother for the recipe she passed down to you and to your mom too. And wherever that recipe came from that you found. I don't know. <laughs> we we'll have to find out. Maybe it was online. <laughs> <laughs> and then we give thanks. The third part is we give thanks to community, to our family, to our parents, to all those that made our life possible to give us desserts and bread that makes us happy, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I'll start by uh, singing the song. So I'll sing the first verse and then everyone join me and then I'll sing the second one and then you join me. So the first one is, I take refuge in the Buddha, the one who shows me the way in this life. And then the second is, I take refuge in the Dharma, the way of understanding and love. And then I take refuge in the Sangha, the community that lives in harmony. So I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm going to invite the sound of the bell and I invite us all to take a few deep breaths. So when you hear the bell, breathe in and then breathe out, okay? Right. And please bring your mind back to the body as we hear the sound of the bell. take refuge in the Buddha, the one who shows me the way in this life. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. Now everyone, please join me. I take refuge in the Buddha, the one who shows me the way in this life. Namo Buddhaya, 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 Namo Buddha
The one who shows me the way in this life. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. I take refuge in the Dharma, the way of understanding and love. Namo Dhammaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Dhammaya. Please join me. I take refuge in the Dharma, the way of understanding and love. Namo Dharmaya, Namo Dharmaya, Namo Dharmaya. I take refuge in the Sangha, the community that lives in harmony. Namo Sangaya, Namo Sangaya, Namo Sangaya. Please join me. I take refuge in the Sangha. The community that lives in harmony. Namo Sangaya. Namo Sangaya. Namo Sangaya. Buddha Saranam Gacha. Dhammam saranam gachami Sangam saranam gachami Please join me. Buddham saranam gachami Dhammam saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. And thanks for sharing your recipe. Maybe you can one day write, have your mom or grandmother write it out for us. Okay. Yeah. I'd love to have a taste of that. Just like the taste of happiness that we get to enjoy when we um, follow the recipe of the Buddha to happiness. So kids, you can um, go with uh, your teacher, Noel, to the back room. Oh. And then actually, you know what, stay here for a moment. Noelle's going to come up and thank you and share and uh, read the welcome statement and the land acknowledgement. Yeah, come sit. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Noelle, and I use she, her pronouns. I'm the children's mindfulness teacher here at PIMC, and I want to welcome you all this morning and a special welcome to the children who came for the Youth Dharma program, and I'm really excited to welcome some new friends into our class today. On behalf of the DEI committee here at PIMC, I'd like to offer a welcome statement and land acknowledgement. We study together and practice for the benefit of all beings and this living earth, that we may all wake up together. We recognize the suffering caused by biases, prejudices, systems of power, 
privilege and oppression based on race, sex, class, age, gender, and all of the many identities we inhabit. We aspire to do no harm and to dismantle barriers that cause separation and suffering, recognizing that our liberation is interconnected with the liberation of all. Portland Insight Meditation Center recognizes and honors the indigenous peoples of this region on whose unceded ancestral lands the center now stands. These include the Clackamas, Multnomah, Chinook, and many other tribes of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz. These and many other native communities made their homes at the confluence of the Willamette and Columbia Rivers for over 11,000 years. We wanna recognize that Portland today is a community of many diverse native peoples who continue to live and work here. We respectfully acknowledge and honor all indigenous communities, past, present, future, and are grateful for their ongoing and vibrant presence. We will now welcome the children into our children's sangha. So if all the kids here today could please follow me, we'll meet right back here at the door. Thank you. We'll see you back. Enjoy your time. Is there anyone here who's new to the center who's here for the first time? You could raise your hand. Welcome. And then anyone on Zoom who's, who's on for the first time? If you could raise your hand. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, great. Now, uh, first, I'd just like to uh, briefly introduce myself for those of you who have not seen me here. Um, um, my name is Trina Trung, and um, I was uh, born into a Buddhist family in Vietnam. And um, through the years of growing up, here in the US, I uh, was always taught about um, the Buddhist practices in daily life. And my earliest memory of meditation was when I was nine years old, um, sitting at a Buddhist retreat in Pennsylvania. And um, I remember my first teacher who gave me my Dharma name saying, to all the adults and all the kids are sitting in the front. Um, just uh, come back to your breath and breathe in and breathe out. And as I was sitting there as a you know, nine-year-old, I'm like, what's the big deal? Okay, I did it. <laughs> now what? <laughs> and um, lo and behold, you know, as I got older, that became harder, right? As more suffering and more moments of the past are built up, it becomes harder to stay in the present moment because the significance that's placed on the past and the way we can't let go of it. So later today, I'll be uh, giving a short talk on how to really let go. Okay. That helps us to arrive and land in the present moment of our life. And I've been uh, studying uh, Buddhism in many traditions, um, from the Zen tradition to the Chan tradition, which is uh, Z Chinese Zen before it moved to Japan. So it was called Chan Buddhism. And um, growing up in the Vietnamese temples, there were a lot of uh, uh, practices of uh, devotion and of surrendering the ego. So. One of the practices that we do in the Mahayana Buddhist tradition is prostration. And it's a very humbling um, uh, physical uh, demonstration to lower ourselves to the ground and to kiss the earth 
and to pay reverence to all that we don't know, we don't know. And to the, the goodness, the Buddha nature that is within and around us. And I found myself uh, landing in my home of uh, the insight tradition where the practice of meditation was really, for me, resonating with this householder life that we live. You know, that there has been so many incredible teachers from the East to the West that saw the possibility of one who still lives in this world, one who still has duties and responsibilities and long to-do lists and lots of projects and still be able to awaken, awaken to the truth, awaken out of misery and suffering. And so I have a lot of deep gratitude for these teachers from the East all the way to the West. And some of the teachers that we know here uh, in the West, such as Joseph Goldstein, Sharon Salzberg, all the way to the teachers like Uba Ken Goenka, uh, Deepama Mudindra. So all the many teachers that have helped us make sense of these ancient wisdom teachings. And one of my dear teachers, uh, Tai Titnya Khan, as well, to help bring alive these teachings that can be now relevant for our time and for our kind of stress and suffering. And so as we come to practice, my invitation to you is to first call in your teachers, call in the people who have shaped your spiritual journey that has you feel inclined and drawn to meditation, to Buddhism, to the inner life. And whatever had you moved to be here. So let's take a moment to just get in touch with that feeling of gratitude and reverence. And wherever you are in your posture, please see if there's an, any way to further settle and soften. If you need to rock the body side to side, make some adjustments as we settle into a 30 minute guided meditation. And really taking time to make yourself comfortable this is not an endurance test. But the more you can find ease and relaxation in the body, the more you can allow your mind to rest because when the body is relaxed, the mind follows. So let us begin by taking some intentional breaths, breathing in such a way that feels nourishing and supportive. And maybe we begin with this full body breathing, breathing in deep and breathing out long, calming the nervous system, getting in touch with what it feels like to be breathing right now, right here.
Notice where you might be holding tension in the body. Is it in the shoulders? Is it in the jaw? Is it in the back or the belly? Just simply bringing awareness is enough for those areas to soften. Recognizing that there's no way that you should be feeling right now or how this experience should be or shouldn't be, but to fully embrace all of what's here, excitement, anxiety, nervousness, uncertainty. discomfort or the possibility of joy or peace or silence, including all of whatever's in your experience right now to just be there. And if, with each in-breath, inviting this calm, allowing and receiving the goodness that is available in the present moment. So whether your eyes are open with a downward cast or eyes are closed, really feeling into this experience of the body breathing. And it helps when we can still the movement in the body. So we can listen to what's within. What's the quality of the breath like right now? What's the mood of this moment? Lightly getting in touch with it, but having the breath be our central focus, grounding us, soothing us, calling us home to the here and the now. Letting sounds anchor you or sensations in the body to be your anchor. Or maybe it's feeling the weight of the body 
pressing against the chair or the cushion. Or the feet pressing against the floor. Know that you're sitting here. Know that there's a body here. Feel it with every part of your being. Not worrying about the future, not caught in the past. Your concern is only with what's here now, what's available now. What is this moment offering you? taking interest into this internal experience. Of the in-breath and the out-breath. Meeting each breath newly and with curiosity like meeting an old friend with warm heartedness, with joy, with gladness. Hello, old friend. I've come home to you now.
Notice any ways in which you might be holding on to your posture. Is there a possibility to soften, to let go? To loosen the rigidity Loosen the grip that we have, whether that's physically, mentally, or emotionally. Giving yourself permission to set it down and to rest, rest in the calmness Rest in the stillness of the breath. Where is the breath most alive in the body? Is it in the belly? Is it in the chest? Or is it at the tip of the nose? I invite you now to take refuge in the breath in this region 
where it's most predominant. And at any time that feels like it's not available, you can simply rely on any anchor to ground you. Sensations in the body are like waves or currents flowing through us, in and out of us. You're noticing as they're arising and as they pass away. And thoughts and all the objects of mind are like clouds passing by. We can see the formation of thoughts. And to know them as thoughts, but without getting caught in them. And with this awareness that we cultivate, we can take a few steps back to create space. To touch into a bit of stillness, a bit of calmness, or a lot of stillness and calmness without the need to fix or change or ignore or avoid. Awareness allows
awareness receives and awareness lets go. Let go of what's no longer serving. Letting go of the unnecessary extra. Can you feel the aliveness of the currents of the waves, impartial to the scenery in the sky of the mind? Maybe moving from your object of meditation to just rest in the openness, the spaciousness of mind. or perhaps to begin again.
as we slowly come to a close for our sitting period, I'd like to invite you now to bring to mind who or what you would like to dedicate your practice to. Maybe there's someone dear to you that you'd like to dedicate this practice to or to a group of people, to the community, to humanity, to the woundedness outside or inside of you. for the possibility of liberation and awakening, of peace, of goodwill. So please take a moment to dedicate your efforts May my practice benefit the many. May my practice contribute to peace within myself and peace in the world. May my practice add to the collective awakening. I'd like to just uh, check in and see after a 30 minute sit, if everyone can, for those of you on Zoom, put in the chat one or two words about what's, what's here with you now. And for everyone here in the room, maybe just shouting out one or two words, what's here for you now? How are you feeling inside? What's the mood of this moment like? Gratitude. Anyone else? Peace. on Zoom, spaciousness and possibility, 
clarity. What was that? Forgiveness. Peace, love of my deceased sister, relief from anxiety, stillness. Abundance. Gratitude for awareness that arises when I return to quiet from thinking again and again. Forgiveness and love and acceptance. Amazing what 30 minutes can do. It's like a transformation occurring in us from the moment we first sat till now. And how simple this is to just sit and do absolutely nothing, but how hard that is. <laughs> I just do one more thing and then I'll sit. Or the conditions have to be all right before I can finally sit. Those patterns of mind that pull us away from what we really are committed to and what we really want. It's like Buddha gave us this recipe and we're like, nah, it can't be that one. That bring me happiness, that's too simple. Like I have to work hard and do a lot more and change myself. And then I will finally get the results of that recipe. But I just don't follow the recipe. But I want what's at the end of that recipe. Right. So there are very specific instructions that the Buddha carefully laid out. And if we just follow, then we will realize, if we follow a little, we realize a little bit of peace and freedom. If we follow a little more, we realize a little more peace and freedom and happiness. And if we follow it all the way and go all in, we experience utmost freedom and peace and happiness and love and acceptance, and stillness, and clarity, and possibilities. And forgiveness becomes natural and easy. So that is the, the, the meditation practice is part of this, the recipe. And I invite you now as Although our sitting period has ended, to continue to carry this with you, that moment of touching into the breath, of finding that calm inside, or anchoring yourself in the body, or in sound, the sound of the birds outside the window, or just in seeing, seeing color, light, form, objects, and seeing each other's faces. And Jim is going to lead us in uh, mindful movement for about 10 minutes, Jim. Yeah. And then um, you can take a little break too if you need to use the restroom. And then we will return for the Dharma talk. And I hope there'll be, I'd like to leave some time for um, everyone to share, reflect, uh, and just be in community together today.
Okay, testing, testing. Very good. No, that's... Got it. So this is a continuation of mindfulness practice. <clears throat> we sit and become still and focus on the breath. Now we move into standing. And I guess I can... I have a little place for me right here. The camera fixed me up. All right. So this is, uh, <clears throat> for those of you that are new to it, it's, uh, it's called Qigong, and it's um, uh, a routine called um, <clears throat> Shibashi One. So we breathe in and breathe out. And it's an extension of our reflection on Sangha, community, community of harmony. When everyone moves together, breathes together, we create a harmony in ourselves and a harmony in the space that we're Occupying here. We're learning about cause and effect. If we move like this, there are effects, there are changes in our sensations, in our feelings, in our thoughts. Breathing in, a long breath. Breathing out, a long breath. And then lifting overhead, we paint a rainbow. We discover everybody in the room is participating in this harmless action, creating harmony and peace, not only in our bodies, but in the whole space, separating clouds. Images that come to mind have an influence on the body and the stretching of the body has an influence on the mind. We're working in harmony. pushing and pulling. Little massage for the spine and the lungs. Pushing and pulling is harmonizing this breathing system. Harmonizing shoulders. Effortless movement in harmony.
pausing, feeling the effects in the sensations, in the feelings. Is it pleasant, unpleasant, or yet to be determined? What is the state of the mind reaching and releasing? Turning, gazing at the moon. Rising, falling. Beginning, ending. Pressing across, noticing sensations in the feet. Engagement of one leg and relaxation in the other leg. It's a whole system of harmony from the soles of the feet to the crown of the head. Each breath brings energy to each cell, opening one hand so you can see it, and the other hand facing the earth. And the gesture is called cloud hands, as if a cloud is moving across the sky with a shadow in harmony and Concord coming together with the movement above and movement below. Now we're going to step out a little more and Splash in the sea, rock back, feel the effects of stretching, lifting the toe, engages the back foot. Riding the waves, you keep the head above the tailbone, so there's a poise and a resting for the spine. Just the arms and hips moving, opening the palms, the sky, turning them down. The pigeon opens its wings and open to the sky, open to the earth. Open to the wind and the sunlight, and then we turn, gathering water to splash in the sea, hearing the symphony of the squeaky boards. Riding the waves, and then the pigeon opening,
And coming back to the center, opening the arms, receiving energy from the harmony in the room. Make a fist and let the dragon rise from the sea. And then spread our wings and soar with the cranes up on our toes. Open the stance a little larger and turn the wheel. Change direction. Back to the center. We lift one hand and one knee, bouncing a ball. The body works in harmony, cooperation, collaboration, the room squeaks in harmony, and then new energy in, release, Thank you for joining me to bring harmony and peace to our bodies after sitting for a while. Now we'll have a chance to share the Dharma with Trina. When we practice meditation, just in like the 30 minutes of sitting here, we can notice how we hold on to so much as far as holding on to the tension in our body, holding our posture up in a certain way, like it has to be like this, really straight or upright. We can notice all the thoughts that we cling to that pull us away from the present moment, right? The, the meaning and the significance that we place onto things that pull us out of the present moment and has us either be in the future in, or in the past of some experiences that is no longer here. And so we can see how this in our practice is really all about this invitation to let go, let go. And on one 
one level we get that yeah yeah i know i need to let go there's a lot i need to let go of right um and then there's the reality which is i still haven't let go of this thing right so first being really honest with ourselves that yes there are these things i'm aware of that i want to let go and yet i just can't seem to let them go and so it's really important to first be aware and acknowledge that even those times where we might have said yeah yeah i let go of that person or that situation from the past but it's really just us ignoring it avoiding it not wanting to deal with it so instead it doesn't show up in our immediate level of awareness but in the subconscious part of the mind when we sit long enough it will come to the surface and there are many layers in which this happens from the surface level all the way down to the more subtle levels of mind where things that we think we were so complete and done with still make its way up to the surface of mind so how do we do this how do we let go first we acknowledge that we've been holding on there's something that i'm attached to that still has this thing be here there's something that i'm believing should be some other way than how it is it shouldn't be like this they shouldn't be like this so first recognizing what we are attached to what we're holding on to that's taking place and just like when our body when we're sitting in meditation and we just can't quite settle or finicky there's some way that we're holding on to this tension or we're trying to make our posture be or look a certain way but it's really in that place of trusting and letting go and softening and allowing the body will begin to settle and relax it's like it's like telling the body relax it won't just do it or if we say let go it just won't happen right it comes in that place of first seeing where is their tension where is their tightness and then awareness moved to that area and bringing up this kind loving attention this where the, those parts of us within soft and settle and so likewise with the things that are coming to the surface that we have trouble letting go of that problem that person that relationship that conversation recognizing how are we holding on are we holding on to the hurt are we holding on to them if only they if only this if only sometimes it's us having to have it all figured out and having everything planned like a letting go plan before we can finally let go right i i just I, once i finish figuring this up then i'll find like if i let me just solve this let me get, just get to the to the let me let me really you know have this all mapped out because why letting go is this can be frightening we could be afraid of change because what will take place if we're no longer holding on to that if that's not occupying the space within us if that's not taking up our mental and emotional energy 
Who are we? What part of ourself would be gone? What does it serve us? What ways in which we're trying to protect ourselves in holding on to that certain view or belief or that longing? I have uh, in front of me like six pages, but I'm going to let go of that. <laughs> and that's part of my patterning. You know, it's, I invite you to consider what, what part of our patterning are at play when we are still clinging and holding on, right? So for me, it's like when I get ready for a talk, I know my tendency and my pattern is prepare a lot and over-prepare because you never know when the silence is too uncomfortable and you need, I need to feel it, you know? So that's like a past thing, but, but I know in that moment when I'm here and I want to be fully present with you, it requires letting go, letting go of the script, letting go of the plans of what I want to say, of what I think might sound good in this moment, but, to, but just to meet this moment exactly the way it is here versus what my mind could only come up with, but still not reality. And so to notice our tendency, when we can't let go, when we're still holding on to something, what is that tendency? What is that pattern that has us hold on or cling or attach to? It's got to be perfect. It's got to be all together. I have to secure the other end before I let go of this. Is it that relationship, that job, that, that dream? whatever it is. And sometimes even the word letting go is hard to really be with because it can be conceptual. It's like, let me just, okay, let go. But emotionally and mentally, it doesn't work that way. We can't drop it and then all of a sudden it's done. Right? So inside of the mind, inside of our emotional complex, through meditation, we can apply this curiosity and this inquiry into what is it about this that has me still cling on? And how is holding on, having me suffer or experience restlessness, anxiety, robbing me from fully experiencing joy or happiness or the present moment, or even that ability to concentrate and focus on whatever is in front of me. So we unpack these layers using Vipassana, the practice of clear seeing. So we use our awareness to reflect once we are still, the body is still and the mind is relatively calm. We can shine the light of awareness into what we're, that thought that keeps coming up to the surface. And we can see, what is it about this? What am I making this mean? What significance am I placing on this that is taking me away from peace? I mentioned before a stat from Fred Luskin that, you know, back in the days, that in the time of the Buddha, people would have maybe just 
seven, eight hundred thoughts going through their head in a day. Guess how many thoughts we have going through our head in today's modern society? 70,000, 80,000 thoughts in a day. And much of that, 80, 90% of that are the same thoughts. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? <laughs> the mic yeah oh no it's off oh maybe could you maybe lowering that I turn it up maybe I turn it up a little too high that first mic one mm -hmm. and so when we really do the work to address these unresolved emotions and thoughts through meditation, through stilling and quieting the mind, we can see on a much deeper level. And we can see what's pulling us away from the present moment. Can everyone at the back hear me? It sounds, okay, good, thank you. And we take the time to pause, to stop, and to look back at our mind to examine as if we're examining a, you know, a gem, like a jeweler examining a gem and bringing a magnifying glass to it and looking at it from all different angles. What is it about this? What is it that, where do I have a fixed view around this? Can I bring in some other perspective, other angles of seeing this matter that may actually help bring me back to my heart that may actually help bring some sense of resolution or bring some compassion to this person or this thing or forgiveness for myself. And so when we look at it from all these different angles, there's an opportunity to see what we have been holding on to. And then upon dissecting this through deep meditation, through the practice of Vipassana, then there's an opportunity now to heal, heal those areas of our heart, uh, course correct the way we've been viewing things, opening our mind up to other possibilities, other way of seeing how things also could be. And that makes way for us to experience this settling of the mind and this opening of the heart. On, um, I just came back from a week long retreat and I had done some work with um, healing a relationship some, you know, with someone dear to me and we tried, we tried. I keep inviting this person into, let's talk. Let's, if we're going to end things, let us, let's at least end on good terms. Let's both leave with love and, and care in our hearts. And they said, no, I want to let this go. I don't want to talk about this anymore. But I knew it's, I know it's not over. Just simply avoiding and ignoring doesn't make it go away. And so... The journey was for me to do the letting go, to do my own work on being complete with the incompleteness, with the lack of closure, right? That I so badly wanted. And the more I wanted the closure, the more I suffer because it wasn't going that way. I wasn't getting what I want. And so I realized that in that be clinging and wanting closure, wanting us to come to a place where we, there's love, there's equanimity, there's resolution that that's causing me to suffer. So needing to let go of that meant that I had to do the work for myself. And, um, you know, I had spent a lot of time, days and weeks, mending and looking at where do I have a fixed view around this? Where am I? Hmm. 
this, this, the disappointment that I feel, what is that rooted in? What am I attached to? What am I wishing was going, was to wishing for it to go another way? How did I, mm, how am I tangled up, caught up in this, that I'm still so wrapped up in it? And so as I continue to mend and heal, I experience a greater depth of joy and freedom. And in this, we use the Buddhist practices of the Brahma Viharas, which are the four boundless qualities, the qualities of true love, which is rooted in love and kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. And these four, dear friends, are the antidote for all those rough edges, the hardened parts of our hearts and mind that may not yet be capable of letting go or of forgiving. And so we bring to mind the goodness within ourselves and then the goodness in the other person. And it's easy when we practice that, as we, the more we practice, we notice the mind shifting from always looking for what's wrong and what's negative to moving to seeing the good and the positive and things, right? So in this practice, I work to really come to the place where when I bring this person up to mind, all that was there was gratitude and love and all the good memories that came with it. And then before that work is doing the healing and forgiving the other person, for they don't know what they don't know. When we hurt one another, we don't know that we have a blind spot, right? That there's something that we're, our, a way in which our patterns are operating that's a block for us to truly be able to receive and give love. And so, as I did the work to heal, I went on to this retreat and the thought came up again. And I said, oh, I thought I really already healed from this. Why is this still here? But not in a judging way, but hmm, this is interesting. It's still coming up. And one of my patterns growing up is, you know, being really hard on myself. And I started to see how I was judging myself for, wow, how did you end up here? How did you get yourself into this mess? And then I realized, ah, oh, I need to forgive myself. This is the last piece. I need to forgive myself for what has already been done. That the past is gone. But what's here now is, yes, I made a mistake. Yes, I could have been more skillful. Yes, I could have been more like this or more like that. And I can forgive myself for how things have been. And so upon practicing forgiveness and love for myself, I felt this another layer of depth of joy and happiness just filling me, just like all the cracks inside of the heart were now patched and sealed and then healed. And so when you pour love into it or joy or gladness, anything into it, it can now contain it and hold more of it. And so I came out of the retreat and a couple days after that, that person who had shut the door on me messaged me and said, you are in my heart. And I said, oh. And the, the last message before that was one that was full of anger that I didn't respond to. But this is how the practices work, is that when we do the work and when we get ourselves back to that place where love is available within us, 
and where we open our heart to let in the pain, heal from the pain, and let out, let love in and let love out flow through us, then anything is possible. Kind of went off on a tangent with the four Brahma Viharas, but the the practice of letting go is us really going deep into these strands of thoughts that has us caught, and then to spend time to really see into the nature of that thought and. When we get to that place where we've investigated and examined, we can see how holding on has caused us so much suffering and the inclination and the urgency to go to work to resolve it so that we can truly let go is it becomes a, a priority to us. So. I invite you now to just check in with what are you holding on to? What is it you need to give up in order to allow for peace and for healing and for forgiveness to be possible for yourself or for another? What view, what beliefs, what ways of being need to be let go to allow for this true letting go to happen? Can you trust in the unknown of what will be on the other side if you let go, if you give up this attachment or this grip, the strong grip we have to whatever is holding us back to open up the dam, the block, that is preventing us from fully flowing with life as is. There are 10 spiritual practices of letting go. The first of generosity, letting go of a tangible thing as a way to let go of the tension caused by <clears throat> grasping, Inte <clears throat> integrity, letting go of bad habits, impulses, and reactive habits of mind, renunciation, letting go of behaviors, prejudices, views, and opinions. Wisdom, letting go of willful naivete, delusion, and ignorance of I'd rather not know. Energy, letting go of procrastination and laziness. Patience, letting go of expectations and that things need to be done my way. Truthfulness, letting go of denial, and the subtle ways we shade our self-narratives. Resolve, letting go of willful doubts, wavering, and indecision. Loving kindness, 
letting go of bitterness, grudges, hatred, and all forms of ill will. Equanimity, letting go of fear, preferences, and the need to dramatize ordinary experiences. So these are the 10 paramis put in the context of letting go that will cultivate these, these qualities, these developments that uh, uh, lead to awakening. And this was uh, put together by Steve Armstrong. The 10 spiritual practices of letting go. And I'd like to share a poem with you. She let go. She let go without a thought or a word. She let go. She let go of the fear. She let go of the judgments. She let go of the, of the confluence of opinions swarming around her head. She let go of the committee of indecision within her. She let go of all the right reasons, wholly and completely, without hesitation or worry, she just let go. She didn't ask anyone for advice. She didn't read a book on how to let go. She didn't search the scriptures. She just let go. She let go of all the memories that held her back. She let go of all the anxiety that kept her from moving forward. She let go of the planning and all of the calculations about how to do it just right. She didn't promise to let go. She didn't journal about it. She didn't write the projected date in her day timer. She made no public announcement and put no ad in the paper. She didn't check the weather report or read her daily horoscope. She just let go. She didn't analyze whether she should let go. She didn't call her friends to discuss the matter. She didn't do a five-step spiritual mind treatment. She didn't call the prayer line. She didn't utter one word. She just let go. No one was around when it happened. There was no applause or congratulations. No one thanked her or praised her. No one noticed a thing, like a leaf falling from a tree. She just let go. There was no effort. There was no struggle. It wasn't good and it wasn't bad. It was what it was. And it is just that. In the space of letting go, she let it all be. A small smile came over her face. A light breeze blew through her. And the sun and the moon shone forever. So now I'd like to invite your voices into the space. What's coming up for you as you hear this teaching and letting go? What has you lean in or lean back? Where are you in that process? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Do you find yourself somewhere in here in this poem? And 
And for those of you on Zoom, you're welcome to uh, unmute yourself or raise your hand and um, I will know to call on you. And everyone in the room here can hear you as well. Mm -hmm. And so I have this mic here. And once you speak, you just turn the bottom, switch it on. Please come up here. And please share your name with everyone. And JJ, where should he stand? On this side? Is it right here? Okay. Okay. Would that be easier for the camera? Hi. Uh, what really hit me during that was yeah. sort of, oh man, that sucks. How do I hold it? Hold it further. <laughs> Trying again? Oh, that's better. Okay. Um, what hit me during that was the idea if I just hate myself and judge myself a little bit more that my problems will go away. And if I think along the lines of what people think the worst of me, that that somehow ennobles me. Like, I feel like if I can just accept the worst story that someone could potentially think about me, that that makes me a good person. And the more that I hate myself, the better of a person I am. And so I think what I could let go of is joining in on that sort of hateful narrative because I find the more I let go of that, the more I let go of the idea that I need to be a perfect person or even really a good person, the better of a person I end up being. And the better of a person I try to be, oftentimes the worse of a person I end up being. So, yeah, that's what I, I that really struck me during that. Mm. Thank you, Tyler. Mm. Mm. One of my favorite lines from a poet named Araya in her poem, what if there's no need to change? She says, the question is not, why am I infrequently the person who I want to become? But the question is rather, why do I infrequently want to be the person who I already am? Well, I want to acknowledge us uh, in the chat on Zoom, Rob wrote, non-attachment is so easy to describe, yet so hard to fully realize. I can only imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have something you'd like to share? Oh, you okay. okay. Can I bring you the mic though? Okay. You're welcome. Let me try to say this without so much emotion. It's difficult for me. Time. I'm doing some important work with some other people. I'm doing some important work with some other people and we just had a group yesterday and letting go was part of it. And for me, there's just a lot of trauma, really significant trauma to myself and it paid forward. 
I think that forgiveness piece is really difficult for myself more than anybody else. <laughs> and I realize that it's really attached to grief that just has not been resolved. And there's a level of, if I let everybody off the hook, including me, that I'm not being responsible to the pain I caused. But I'm really trying to work on all the things I know as an adult, but I just can't let myself off the hook. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you for, for sharing. And as we, the children gather back here, I'd like to close us with a, a song and we'll have the kids join too. Hi, kids. Can I join you? Yes. Actually, I have another song I'd like to teach you guys. Would you be interested in that? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So I will... Um, yeah, we could after it. Yeah. So we'll sing this uh, song that um, I'm going to teach us all. And then afterwards, we'll sing... Um, May all beings be happy. And Addie perhaps will lead us. Actually, let me get the mic so Addie can lead us in that afterwards. And I'll start by singing um, two verse, singing it twice, and then we'll sing it together five times as a group. So are you ready? Okay, so I'm gonna sing it. I'm gonna sing it twice. Okay, the, it's just one line. And then after that, we'll sing it together five times. Okay. So please center yourself and have the body be comfortable and at ease. And just allow all the tension to soften, to relax really getting in touch with the stability of the body. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. And everyone together. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. I release control and surrender to the 
flow of love that will heal me. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. And Addy, would you like to kick us off with a song? May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. Sadhu. 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 Are you ready to blow out the candle? Yeah. Yes, three, two, one. All right, thank you, kid. And dear friends, thank you for your presence and for sharing your practice and your vulnerable share. I appreciate your being with us in community today. And please join us in the living room to the right of the stage. Go to those doors and we'll have snacks and drinks back there. And there's also a library where you can check out our books. So thank you for being here.